My name is Kaylee. I am one of the reference librarians here. Hopefully, if you have been into the building prior to COVID-19, you recognize my face. And uh, I normally work right at the reference desk here at the main branch. I have been with the library for eight years now. This is the first time I am teaching this class. I have spent the last couple months doing a ton of research for you guys, so hopefully you don't have to. Hopefully everyone was able to get a copy of the handout for this class. I will refer to it a few times. If you haven't gotten it yet, it's not a big deal. It's available for download from the library's website. I'll post that link at the end. It is also available if you wanna give us a call or if you stop here at the reference. So the reason that we're giving this talk today is because there has been a huge push to cut costs on cable bills, which I'm sure if you're here, you, like me, have discovered that it got very expensive to have cable at home. And especially in the last few years with all of these different streaming giants that have come out, there's all of these shows that you want to watch, but it can be expensive if you want to have basic cable, as well as having all of these different streaming services. And if you're new to streaming services, I'm going to go super in depth on all of that. And we will talk about all the different options out there for you, including some that you may have never heard of. There were some that were new to me when I was creating this presentation for us. Uh, so we're going to go through all of these together this evening. We're going to be covering a lot of information very quickly, which is in large part why I made us a handout for today so that the, all of the information is in there if I go over something a little too quickly. I do very much encourage you to do your own research on any sort of service before you begin working with them. Most of the services that we're going to talk about today are one month contracts, which is awesome because you can go month to month, change it out, mix it up if something is not working for you. And you will wanna be able to work, work on um, your own needs and see what you're interested in because maybe for you, that is keeping your cable provider perfectly fine. I'm gonna put up the PowerPoint presentation. I believe you should still see like a tiny me on the screen with you for that. Very first thing I want to mention is that we are talking today about um, saving money, getting rid of, uh, potentially getting rid of your uh, mainstream cable provider and uh, moving into streaming services, of which there are oh so many. <laughs> My first disclaimer here is that the library and our staff do not endorse or recommend any of these products mentioned within this presentation as an organization. We are presenting all these options to you, but you are very much encouraged to research the best option for your situation. This is just an overview of information. In this presentation, I'm going to present a number of options and different suggestions that you can follow up on. But if any of these services interest you, you are going to want to make sure that it will fit your needs specifically. And then I also do want to mention that not all services will work on all devices. Uh, so that is a big thing to take into account when you are beginning to do streaming, that you want to make sure you have the right device in order for you to be able to use the service you'd like to use. So you have decided that you are going to try and cut cable. Before doing that, the first thing you'll wanna do is contact your cable provider. I am sure that many of you have discovered that if you contact them, they might be willing to cut you a deal of some sort, and that might entice you enough to stick with your cable provider for a little bit longer. If you have not called them in a while, you might want to give it a shot now. I will hazard that cable and internet costs are climbing just in general. So unfortunately, it is hard to find something that's going to be really, really cheap these days. You are going to want to test your internet speed before you start doing some regular streaming. And I'll talk about that on our next slide here. And then devices. You want to make sure um, that you have a device that will work for your needs. If you don't have a device at this point or a smart TV or something along those lines, you may want to 
find a service that you really like and then take a look at what devices will work with it that will and purchase then instead of purchasing and then figuring it out. I do encourage anyone who is looking into streaming options going from traditional cable to make a list of all the channels and shows that are important to you. So if you are a big sports watcher, you'll want to mark down which sports channels are important to you. If it is very important to you to have your local news, that's something that is not guaranteed on all of these streaming services. So you'll want to make sure that you do note that for yourself. If there's specific channels that you like, uh, those kind of things can be very helpful. I recommend making a big a list of this and then starting to research the different providers for you. And it, for a lot of you, and like for myself, a combination is sometimes the best option. You may want something that has a live TV option, but also have some on-demand viewing with a different service entirely. And that's totally normal these days. <laughs> and it, remember again, that most, most of the services are month to month, so they can be canceled if something's not working for you, which is awesome if you have been tied to the cable contracts over time here. And again, we already said here, sometimes a combination is best for you. All right, so if you have the handout in front of you, there is a long glossary of terms. I'm just gonna go over a few things for words that I'm gonna use a lot tonight. So HDMI, this is a term that you probably know. Um, this is used for both the, the, both the port as well as the cord. Um, this is the specific port that's going to be on your television in order for you to connect multimedia devices to it. Uh, this kind of this will replace um, the traditional red, white, yellow cords that we used on our older TVs. Uh, if you do have an older TV and don't have an HDMI port, there are options for you. There are HDMI port adapters wherein you would plug in those yellow, red, white, and then it has an HDMI port for you. It may not work quite as well, especially if your TV is much older, but there is an option for you. Whenever I use the term device, um, I am typically referring to the HDMI connected streaming unit. So we'll go over a few devices in a second here, but like if you have a Roku, if you have a Kindle um, Fire Stick, those kind of things, that's what a device is. It can also refer to your computer or tablet. For the purposes of this talk, we're mostly talking about the devices that will be used when streaming with your TV. Smart TV, it's nice because usually a smart TV does not require an additional device hookup. It already has internet connectivity and streaming options in it. A lot of times the smart TVs come built in with Netflix, Hulu, Prime, the big name ones and then they have the option for you to, can, to add more to your TV. The streaming means that it is using a constant internet connection to play video. So when we stream video content, which is what like Netflix does, uh, it is not downloading the content. It does not take up any memory space on your TV or your device. It will take up the app itself will take up a little space on your device, but it is a constant internet connection. So if you were to have your internet interrupted or if your internet is slower, then you are going to see the streaming be disconnected or you might get one of those like loading circles that lasts a while. That's another reason to test your internet speed which we'll get to next here. Cloud, the term cloud refers to servers that will store information for you around the world, not directly on your device. So a lot of these will have cloud storage options, especially if it comes to having DVR. Um, and DVR, I don't think is on this slide, but that is digital video recording. And that allows you to record shows and movies to watch later. And if you have a traditional cable box, or if you're familiar with that, you might be familiar with having a DVR built in. However, with traditional cable boxes, it is hard memory, not cloud memory for the most part, which means your memory is a little limited. These 
services typically have a cloud memory which will allow you to have more things stored um, for later or will have a, they'll have a set time for how long it will be saved for you something along those lines and mbps now you may have seen this on any sort of internet advertisements this is actually referring to how fast your internet connection is um, the bigger the number, the faster it is, basically. And if you are finding like your internet is much slower, you may want to increase it at some point. I think about 100 MBPs is pretty standard. I'm currently, I'm considering going up to the next level because we use a lot of streaming in my house. All right, so here are some devices that we're gonna talk about. So these devices that connect to an HDMI cord to your TV. So the, there's some more details on these in the handout that's a little more detailed for each one. The Fire Stick goes through Amazon specifically, and that is tied to your Amazon account. And the Fire Stick has, will allow you to add apps to it just like any of these others. Before we get into all of the streaming services, you do need to have a compatible device that is going to allow the streaming service you want. Almost all of the streaming services that we are going to talk about today will work on a computer, a tablet, and or smartphone. So those aren't listed here. However, if you are someone who typically watches TV that way, that's totally cool. Fine. You can do that with most of these services. They all have like web presences as well. I will mention that a lot of the times the web version or the phone or tablet version is going to look a little bit different than what you would have on your TV. You're usually able to access everything still though. These devices would connect via HDMI to your TV. Most of them are going to be compatible um, with any updated TV. Uh, the Chromecast is a little bit different than like the Fire Stick or the Roku in that it is not going to use internet storage. It kind of acts as a go-between between between a device and the TV. It's super easy to use, but you wind up using more battery life on your device that you're transferring it to. There are some game systems that do allow for you to watch streaming services on them. Uh, including the PlayStation 3 somewhat, it's a little outdated now, but the PlayStation 4 for sure. And they just recently announced that PlayStation 5 and I'm sure that that's gonna be part of it. Um, the Xbox systems as well as the Wii has some limited capabilities for streaming as well. If you have a smart Blu-ray or DVD player, you can absolutely use those. They will have limited space when it comes to adding additional apps, especially newer ones. So for instance, one of the services we're going to talk about today is Peacock, which is the new service from NBC. And since that is brand new, if you have an older Blu-ray player that you've been watching like Netflix and Hulu on, it may not be supported in their store since it's a new service. So you might want to look into that as well. And of course, if you do have a smart TV, you might be able to bypass having a different device. Not all streaming services will work on all devices. I'm gonna say this so many times tonight, so I apologize for the repetitive nature of that. Um, but I cannot emphasize that enough for you because it does run into problems. Um, for instance, I mostly use the PlayStation 4 at my house to watch TV. And I did have a Fire Stick for a few apps, but I didn't use it as much and my Fire Stick died. And now there's a couple apps that I like to use, but I have no access to. So I'm gonna have to pick out my own new device here coming up. So um, checking your internet speed. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. This is very simple to do. Um, streaming requires constant internet connection. So you are going to want to have a good internet speed. So there are some free websites I listed here. You can certainly seek out your own if you'd like. I will say that all three of these that are um, depicted on this picture here, I took from the same computer 
on the same day, probably within an hour of each other. And the speeds kind of vary. And those were here at the library. So we have a lot of people on the same network at the same time. But even so, the, you can see that the speed's a pretty decent speed. I would be able to easily watch something streaming. Um, as I said, about 100 is average. Saying that you have 100 MVPs does not mean that your readout is always going to be 100. It usually varies, especially depending on how many devices are connected. So if you are in a household where there are several people who are connected to your Wi-Fi, maybe using their phones or tablets or different TVs in different rooms, you may want to consider having a faster speed because the more things connected, the slower your internet's going to be. Um, one thing to note too is that sometimes it's the modem and the router that may be the problem for you. If you are having an internet provider saying that you have, you know, a hundred and you're consistently seeing much lower than that and you're concerned, you may want to consider purchasing your own modem and router. Um, Usually that's one device these days, all kind of connected. And you might see a big difference in that. I know that I had a colleague who told me I had to include that in this talk because that was the big thing that fixed her internet. It was just that the one provided from her internet company was so-so. <laughs> so updating it was important for her needs and helped her with her um, streaming options. So we're gonna jump right into it here. So these are some free streaming services that you see here I mentioned have ads. So there is never anything completely free. Um, in this case, the tax is that you have to watch more commercials. <laughs> now I'm sure everyone is pretty familiar with YouTube YouTube has movies and TV shows on it that are actually uploaded by reputable people, um, like reputable companies will post them that people can watch without having to pay for them. Um, there are also some shows that will post clips um, instead of posting the whole show. You know, Saturday Night Live, for instance, will always post a bunch of their skits the day after. Uh, you'll also see frequently like the late night shows will post specific interviews or the monologue or anything like that. Um, or, you know, if you watch James Corden, his carpool karaoke's are always on there. But there are actually shows and movies on there as well. You do have to sit through some commercials, but you know, that's the price we pay. Let me show you here. So these are a few of the other services you may not have heard of. So first off, Peacock. Peacock is going to be in this two times today because Peacock is the newest service from NBC and it has a free version as well as a paid version. And the free version is going to have a lot of older shows um, and movies. I know that I watched Beetlejuice on it a few weeks back and it has commercials, but it's still the full film. If you see here on the handout for it, or on the uh, picture I've grabbed here, uh, there's a little like purple corner. If it has the purple corner, that is, you have to be a paid subscriber to watch it, but the other ones are free. I've actually found a lot of like old sitcoms and movies on there, and even some that were, you know, just finished up last year are free for watching without any sort of um, price commitment. You can have a free account. You do require a login. Um, almost all of these will require you have a login to use, which means they will have an email address and a password for you. But other than that, and watching the ads, it's free. Crackle uh, is a fun one that was new to me. That is actually owned by Sony, Columbia, and Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. Um, and they have some original productions on there. They also have um, movies and shows and they have like a lot of classic things you see, like I see some 90s things, um, but also if you like Gordon Ramsay shows like Hell's Kitchen and Kitchen Nightmares, those are on there and it's free. 
uh, IMDB TV, um, that is from the Internet Movie Database, which here at the library we consult a lot uh, to try and find out information about movies. So if someone comes in and says, I'm looking for this movie that came out a few years ago and it had Glenn Close in it, we can search for it. Uh, but IMDB TV, um, they have movies and TV shows that are on there completely for free. Again, you will need to have a login, but completely free. I'm uh, going to Tubi. I'm not entirely sure if that's Tubi or Tubby, but I'm going with Tubi. Tubi is owned by the Fox Corporation and they have a bunch of movies and TV shows as well. The content rotates as does the content on most of these where things will be on there for short periods of time and they change it out. And then Pluto TV. And Pluto TV is a little bit different because they say that it's live TV, but this is a little snap here from the guide on it. And you'll see it's not like real channels necessarily. It's usually themed channels. So there is a Baywatch channel today that is just all Baywatch today. So they do have it set up though, as if it was a regular channel. However, if you're looking to see what's on NBC tonight or, you know, to watch something live, that's not going to be the channel for the service for you because it's not going to be the same thing that your friend is seeing while watching TV on Spectrum. But if you're just looking to spend some time in the afternoon, watch something, it's a great service. It has a lot of different options on it. It varies from day to day. There's a bunch of movies on there too. It's a cool thing. That was one that was new to me when I was researching this. Next here, so these are going to be the closest to what your traditional cable is. These are some live TV services. They are varying in prices. I will mention, this is when I'm going to start mentioning prices, and uh, the prices in this handout are current as of about two weeks ago, and I discovered just today when I was uh, sort of playing around on some of these sites that Fubo TV went and upped its price by $5 since I wrote this handout. So they are now $64.99 if you have the handout and wanted to know that there. These services are all going to vary greatly based on which channels are offered, uh, the DVR provided, uh, if local services, if there's local channels, and the sports channels specifically. We're going to go through these kind of quickly, but if you are interested in one, these services all have their channels listed on their sites. I'm going to show you real quick a few of those. And if you've had, if you've made yourself a list of like must have channels for you, uh, I encourage you to, you know, visit these different websites with that list in hand. That way you can kind of check things off as to what fits your needs. So these are just some of the channel guides that I snapped from a few of these websites. Now, if you look at the handout, the first one that's going to catch your eye, if you're looking at the prices, is uh, Philo TV, and that is $20 a month, which is really like the cheapest I've seen for a live TV option and is really impressive. Uh, but if you are someone who wants to watch sports or local channels, you may want to get this in combination with something, or maybe this one just won't serve your needs. If you, like me, watch a ton of Food Network and HGTV, you may be really contemplating switching to this network, <laughs> uh, this service provider here. There are going to be no local channels, but there is a DVR option, uh, and so Hilo is pretty nice. Um, Hulu Live, you have probably heard of. Hulu is one of the big streaming giants, uh, but they have a live version that allows you to watch a lot of big channels, including having local channels. And I did include that on this list here. So you can see you would be able to watch your um, three, five, and eight if you are someone doing that. Oh, and CBS, sorry. Um, and, uh, but you'll notice on there, for instance, with Hulu Live, I don't see Nickelodeon. So like if you have Kids at Home and Nickelodeon's their favorite channel, that might be something that you look at and go, not quite right for us. And they are going to have less recording options than some of the others. 
Um, it just kind of varies. But having Hulu Live also gives you access to Hulu on its own, which does have a lot of original content and on-demand viewing, which we'll get into in a little bit here. Fubo TV is really nice if you are someone who likes sports. There are quite a few sports channels included. Uh, it also includes all three Hallmark channels if you like the Hallmark, Hallmark Network. So you could have all three of those as well as Lifetime and Disney. There are going to be with Fubo, there's no local channels. There are several different packages to choose from. So this right here, what I've grabbed for these screenshots is not necessarily inclusive. Please do go to their website for more information. That's another thing to note about a lot of these streaming services. They'll have different package levels. Um, so what I've listed here is the lowest cost and then packages go up from there from these different services. And that's obviously going to vary based on your needs. Um, some of them will offer different levels for more channels, um, more sports channels or things like that. You're going to see uh, YouTube TV. I did kind of two screenshots for that because it was hard to get all in one. Um, YouTube TV, I will tell you, is what I currently have. I'm not 100% in love with it, but it suits my needs for the moment. Looking into all of these different services for this talk, I was considered, I am considering trying different services. And like I said, you have that option with these month to month, which is very nice. So with YouTube TV, you do have local channels, live TV, sports channels, news channels, entertainment, etc. There are quite a few kids channels now. Uh, they recently did raise their prices. They are now $64.99 a month. Um, and that was due to the acquisition of a whole big group of channels, apparently. On to Sling TV. Sling TV is going to have multiple different packages to choose from. They start at $30 a month. Um, but you may find that you would like more channels, which will then increase your cost as you go. They do have a few different options. Um, and I know several people who've used it and love it. I did not mention on here at and TV, at and T TV Now, <laughs> um, which was formerly Direct TV Now. That one has live TV viewing and DVR as well. They are also $64.99 a month. Going into some of the popular streaming services. These are going to be your on-demand viewing. These are the big name ones. Um, Netflix, which has been around for quite a while now, is among these. Um, all of these services do have original content. What that means is there are shows that are made directly for this provider. Um, so if you do not have that network, that service, you won't be able to watch it. And that's something to consider if you're someone who wants to see all of the latest things, especially because now, you know, you watch the Emmys and you see all of these shows that look amazing, but you don't have the service. <laughs> and that can be frustrating. Some of them, some of those original shows do go to DVD, but not all of them. The content on these does shift and change periodically. Uh, there are new things added all the time. Uh, there are old things removed as well. Uh, there are some websites that like devote their time to telling you what's coming to Netflix and what's leaving Netflix and all of that. There are also sometimes uh, shows that, or movies that will jump between these providers, especially I've seen this a lot with Netflix and Hulu. I think that's largely due to whoever is getting paid for the show. Uh, so for instance, um, How I Met Your Mother sitcom used to be all on Netflix, moved over to Hulu. So now it's on Hulu. Um, there's a ton of them like that, that have just kind of jumped between them. And lately with all of these different networks who have created their own streaming service, there are a lot of shows, especially that are leaving these streaming platforms to move to the network one. Uh, I will mention too, a lot of the services we're talking about today these ones included, all allow for free trials. Uh, some of them are as short as like two or three days, but a lot of them will give you a one week trial. So if you did want to, if you've never had Disney Plus and now's the time that you want to watch Hamilton, um, you could get a free trial, watch Hamilton, cancel that if you don't want to keep it. 
The same for Netflix or Hulu or a lot of the other services I've mentioned. You can get a brief trial and if there's something you've been dying to watch that everyone's been talking about, you can always do that. But these ones are the big name ones. The prices on these have been relatively low because they are big names. Um, so they have so many subscribers that they can charge a little less. So Netflix starts at $8.99 a month. Hulu is currently at $5.99. Prime Video is at $8.99 a month and Disney is at $6.99. And I will mention um, Disney also has an option to combine with Hulu and ESPN Plus for $12.99 at this point. That I think is going to go through the year. I think it's part of their oh, Disney Plus is like new still. So adding it into that. All right. So these are some other services that are more themed to a specific company or or they're tied to a specific company or they have some sort of theme surrounding them. As I said before, this talk is not going to be 100% inclusive of all the services out there. I'm sure I have missed some. So I apologize if there's one you wanted to know about that I don't have on here. But you'll see some names that are familiar to you like CBS, um, HBO, those, ESPN, like those are definitely tied to a specific network, but they usually do have original content as well as contact from, content from their networks. Peacock is amongst those as well. That is from NBC. Uh, Peacock is brand new. That one just came out last, I want to say, I think it was last month. It was not out when I started working on this project. And then I had to get it to test it out. So currently I have the free version of Peacock. Um, but they do have a paid version that is $4.99 a month. With all of these services, it's going to be a little bit different. Some of these are very specialized. So I include uh, I included Dazen on here because it is for like sports matches and boxing um, and live and archived. And we have had people ask about those services in the past, um, because if you don't have like a pay-per-view option, you might want something like that. ESPN has original content as well as past archived footage. They have all the like 30 for 30 things on there. They do have UFC pay-per-view as part of it as well. There are going to be some selected live sports included. So if you like that, Peacock has the original content. Um, they also do like next day viewing of NBC shows. They're going to have, uh, they have a variety of movies and things. Friendly um, is a family friendly uh, content network that actually does live TV, but only for a few channels. Um, so you'll see there's not very many. This is friendly right here, but it has all of the Hallmark channels as well as Game Show Network, Outdoor Channel. Um, they do have a few different plan levels. So they don't, I think at the $5.99, there's no D DVR, but when you go to the next level, which is $7.99, you can have things DVR. That's a good option for someone if they wanted to just watch all those Hallmark Christmas movies that come out in October uh, <laughs> and just do it for a couple months and then you can cancel that. CBS recently added live viewing so you can view live shows on select networks from CBS. They also have a lot of older sitcoms and movies and things and I kind of included down here if you're someone who wants to do like those uh, crime dramas from CBS that they're very well known for, uh, there's a ton of them on there, which is cool, especially since there's not as much new content this fall, something to dive into. And I liked that they had some classic comedies like I Love Lucy um, and Frasier and Cheers is on there. It's really cool. Again, all of these have free trials too. So if you just wanted to go on and watch that favorite I Love Lucy episode, you totally could. <laughs> and let me see if there's anything else I wanted to mention here. Um, oh, Apple TV. So Apple TV Plus, um, they are on-demand viewing. They have some original shows and movies and some that I really want to watch. And it's making me really want to get Apple TV Plus to see some of them. But they also have um, additional channels 
that are offered at extra prices. So their pricing model is a little confusing. Uh, I'm sure someone could explain it to me, but it is confusing to try and figure out uh, the different things there because there's some stuff that's automatically included, but then there's additional in-app purchases for rentals of movies and things like that. Uh, they do have quite a bit on there as well, though, and they do have a lot of original content. So having um, a subscription to that gives you the original content. Okay, <clears throat> we're winding down, I'm talking fast. So this one is not on the handout, but I wanted to include it to mention it as an option for you, especially if you're someone who watches a lot of movies. So these renting and buying digital movie options uses cloud storage, uh, which means again, that this is not something that's gonna be stored on your device, but rather stored in the cloud somewhere. You can purchase digital copies of movies uh, and shows through many different providers. So if you do not want to have Prime Video, but you would like to rent a movie that is only on Amazon Prime and for some reason not on DVD here at the library, which would be a crime, um, there are options for you where Amazon will let you rent a movie for Usually it's like $2.99, $3.99, something like that. And then you have it for 48 hours and it's a short-term rental. Similar to if you've ever used like Redbox, um, that kind of thing, except it's all digital. There are also some through Fandango Now. Um, that's a service that allows you to rent movies. Uh, so it basically kind of houses the movies. You can rent or buy movies through there. And again, watch them at home. If you do buy it, your content is tied to your account. There is another option with uh, Movies Anywhere and Vudu and Google Play. There's a lot of different things. One thing I'll mention too is that you can also get digital copy codes in movies that you've purchased. Um, so especially with Disney films, they were doing this. I don't know if they are now because of Disney Plus, but if you have uh, if you purchase a Disney um, DVD, you might see inside a little slip of paper that will have a code on it. It's usually like numbers and letters. And that allows you to have a digital copy of that, um, which is very nice if you want to just have it stored somewhere so you always have your movies with you. That's kind of neat. And then some of these do allow you to combine the services together. Um, so I think Voodoo allows that for you to kind of take the purchases you made from other places and store everything in one place. They're also going to be on many different devices, their own store to rent movies and shows in. So for instance, I use the PlayStation 4, I said, for most of my streaming. And there is the PlayStation store that will add, like prompt me to rent this new movie that's out or buy because of this year, you know, with all of the movies that were just released on video on demand, they'll say, oh, don't you wanna buy this? <laughs> um, usually the, this whole thing with renting and buying these movies usually does not require any sort of subscription, but you do need to have a login and you would have to pay for it. One, one piece of advice that another colleague had mentioned to me is for some of these streaming services, especially, you may want to consider purchasing like a reloadable Visa gift card uh, so that you don't want to end up getting hit with extra fees. Uh, she said that her family does that for a lot of the rentals just so that, you know, if one of her kids accidentally does it, she doesn't get hit with some big fee because there's only $30, whatever, on the card. So that might be an option for you. And lastly, um, so this is a streaming with Mentor Public Library. So hopefully if you are here in this chat, you are local and a member of our library. If you aren't, I'm sorry, this might apply to you, whichever library you frequent. But our library allows you to have a bunch of free things um, just by being a member. And one of those is streaming content several of those are streaming content. So we have here at the library, these three big ones um, for streaming video, Canopy, RB Digital, and Hoopla. And they each work a little bit differently, but they're all tied to your library card. Um, 
Canopy is going to have independent films, classic films. There's several Cary Grant films on there, which I'm a fan of, um, and a bunch of different short films. And you can have 10 movies a month with your library card. There is also a great feature on here that is called the Canopy Kids Collection, which allows you to have unlimited checkouts. So if you are someone who has your kids or grandkids often and want to check out streaming content through the library, no charges, there is that Canopy Kids collection with unlimited checkouts, which is very nice. RB Digital. So RB Digital works a little differently in that uh, what happens is you check out a seven day pass to one of these three services here. You do need multiple accounts for this. We have handouts for these at the library um, if you do have any additional questions. Uh, the great ones on RB Digital are uh, Acorn TV, IndieFlix, and then the Great Courses series. Acorn TV is the one that we get asked about the most because it has all of the British shows on it, uh, like Miss Marple, um, The Midsummer Murders, everyone loves those. Um, so that one's awesome. You can check out multiple times that seven, you get a seven day pass. You know, you can just mark your calendar every Monday. You're going to just sign it out again if you're someone who uses it a lot. IndieFlix has um, some feature films, a lot of documentaries and independent films, as well as some shows. Uh, the great courses are going to have a lot of video lectures and documentaries on thousands of topics. So if you're someone who enjoys the nonfiction kind of things, you would definitely enjoy great courses. Um, going on to Hoopla, Hoopla allows you to stream movies and shows. Um, they also feature music, audiobooks, comics, and uh, ebooks. But for our purposes today, we're still focusing on the media here. Uh, the videos on Hoopla, you get up to 20 a month, um, and it resets at the beginning of the month. It is tied to your library card, as are all of these, but all of them will have you make a login as well. Uh, with Hoopla Lens, you get a three day checkout for it. Canopy is two days. Um, with both of them, you know, if you watch half the movie and come back to it a few hours later or the next day, you are able to pick up right where you left off. Or you can, you know, just if you're, especially if you're getting a kid's movie, you can just watch it over and over again. Um, it does save your place on the film is what I mean. And uh, it can be with Hoopla, you can download um, to, you can download the items. So, a few years ago, I know I recommended this to my brother who was flying on a plane with a small child and needed something to occupy them. Uh, so he downloaded several, I think it was Sesame Street at the time uh, from Hoopla that were then able to play without having a constant internet connection. Um, so that was nice there. And then with those, um, as I said, we do have handouts for each one of these services at the library and they are on the library's website if you are interested in finding out more or you are always welcome to give us a call. Okay, so last thing to mention before I open you all up to these questions. One thing to consider, especially if you are in a larger family or you know have a bunch of friends who are interested in some of these services, is to consider that some of these services allow you to have multiple profiles under one account. A lot of times they will tell you when you're signing up, there's different price points for how many profiles can be under the same account. Um, so if you are interested in sort of sharing a service among several family members or friends, you may want to consider going up a level and maybe they pay for one thing and you pay for one thing. And that way you can kind of share the costs of these. Um, so it may be worth chatting to friends or family to try to figure out which services they have, which services you have, and what you may be willing to share. Um, many of these services are more than willing to allow you to have a friend here and mentor and, you know, someone in another state even who is on the same account as long as it's all being paid for, you know, the right way. Um, so that's something to consider as well in here. And lastly, last, lastly on this is that I did mention again, the one service for you may not be out there. You may want to try out a bunch of different ones. 
Uh, you may want to have a combination of services. Uh, your needs are specific to you and your family. And if you are going all streaming, you know, you have the options now to be able to get exactly what you want. So on here, I've mentioned the handout, if you have not gotten one, can be found at metropl.org slash no more cable. Um, you can also stop by the reference desk for a copy. That is my email address on there. I, as I said, I'm not an expert, but I am happy to help. <laughs> so at this point, I do have it set that you can unmute yourself if you do have a question. A couple questions here. You do not need a separate device for each service. Um, someone asked if you need a separate device for each service. No. What you might find, though, is that some services will work with some devices and not others. So I said I use the PlayStation for most of my things. Um, Friendly TV, which I've used before, does not work on my PlayStation. It worked on my Fire Stick, but not the PlayStation. Um, so you may want to kind of investigate if you're looking to purchase something. All right. And then um, Carolyn and Paul asked about budget options um, for Browns and Buckeyes. Uh, so some of these are going to be with uh, if you have looked into a digital antenna, which I didn't really go into in here because it's not so much streaming. There is an initial cost for a digital antenna. But after that, you ba it basically works the same way as the old rabbit ears would, where you're able to get those local channels. So if you're someone who wants those, you can 